As haematologists treating patients with blood cancers, one of the most common questions that we get asked by our patients is how long have I had it for? Or when did the cancer start? How fast is it growing? Or indeed, is it still growing? So it's these really fundamental questions that we wanted to answer in this study. And we looked at a particular cancer to first address these questions. The cancers are called myeloproliferative neoplasms and they're a chronic form of blood cancer. That's um, fairly common within the population and increases as people get, get older. So we took 10 patients with myeloproliferative neoplasms. They had presented with disease at different ages, right from their 20s to some patients in their 70s. And they had a variety of different types of myeloproliferative neoplasms. We took individual blood cells from these patients, and then we grew each individual blood cell into a colony of cells. And then what we did is undertake whole genome sequencing, so sequence all the DNA within each of these colonies. And effectively, that gave us multiple whole genome sequences from each individual patient. And then what we did is construct what's essentially a family tree of mutations across the blood cells from each individual patient that in effect told us how the cells were related to one another. That then allowed us to time the driving mutations that cause these cancers to wet at whichever point in the patient's life when they were occurring. And it also allowed us to understand when the cancer started to grow and at what speed it was growing over the lifetime of the patient. So what we found in this study was completely unexpected. Normally our intuition tells us that the the genetic changes that drive a cancer perhaps occur a few years before the cancer and then the patient presents with a, a clinical manifestation um, and to clinic with abnormalities, either complications or abnormalities in their blood counts. What we found was the complete opposite. We found that the, the cancer causing driver mutations are required very early in life. The first event was in many of our patients was in childhood or indeed in utero. So for example, the JAK2 mutation that drives the majority of myeloproliferative neoplasms was acquired in childhood or in utero. Indeed, DNMT3A mutations, which are also prevalent in these conditions, and are actually very common in a phenomenon called clonal hematopoiesis, which is something that you develop in your blood as you get older. This was also occurring very, very early. And in some of our patients, the earliest estimates were within days to weeks of conception in utero. So what this is actually telling us is that we acquire these mutations very early and it is a period of lifelong outgrowth that then eventually leads to complications from this cancer. What we also found was that these cancers can, as they grow, pick up additional driver mutations and often those additional mutations can be separated by decades across the patient's life. We then were able to estimate how fast these cancers grew and we found that the cancers were growing at different rates in different individuals and even when you looked at the same clone, such as a clone that had JAK2, a JAK2 mutation, it was growing at different rates in different individuals, telling us that there's something else that predetermines how fast um, a cancer clone is going to grow, perhaps your germline makeup or the environment within which these cells are growing. What was quite striking though is that the faster the clone was growing, the quicker the patient presented with disease. So the rate of growth of the clone is strongly proportional to the latency to a diagnosis. And in, in addition, what we found is that because we could estimate how fast these clones were growing and when these mutations that caused the cancer occurred, we could backtrack and estimate when would have we been able to detect these cancer driving mutations in this patient. And we estimate that we would have been able to detect these mutations 10 to 40 years before diagnosis, which really then tells us that if we could detect these mutations early, and we could then estimate their growth rates, we could potentially in the future predict which patients within, which individuals within the healthy population are on a path to future clinical complications. Well, in this particular blood cancer, many patients present with complications from their cancer at diagnosis, usually in the form of blood clots, either in arteries or veins. And so if we know that actually these cancers have been growing for a very long time in these individuals, then it begs the question, should we be identifying such individuals within the healthy population, estimating which patients um, are on track to having complications and start to treat them early, perhaps with a uh, very safe agents such as aspirin or other agents that would prevent um, or reduce the risk of a blood clot. The other thing is that there are some agents in clinic that we use that are that are able to reduce the size of the tumours and it also raises the question whether if we started to use those or tested their use at an earlier stage um, might they be of benefit to stop or halt the rate of growth of these cancers. The other thing it begs the question is um, 
you know, when should we be diagnosing these cancers, given that they are present lifelong, really? At what stage should we be considering um, an earlier diagnosis in these patients? Uh, well, one other thing we'd like to add is that the method that we used to time the origins and the trajectory of this cancer can actually be used uh, in other blood cancers and indeed in other solid tumours. So this really now asks whether all blood cancers evolve in this way or whether there are a variety of different paths to different cancers. So um, it would be really interesting to look at acute leukaemia or perhaps lymphoid cancers to see what is the trajectory um, to these different cancers. And I think that knowledge is critical for programs aimed at early detection and prevention of cancer.